We've all heard it said, it's all about the good times, but in life, it's not always good times. Sometimes it's bad times, sad times. Sometimes we feel down, discouraged, depressed, maybe even in despair. There might be times that we feel we're on a sinking ship and we only keep sinking deeper. Today, we're gonna talk about what to do when you feel yourself sinking, and more importantly, how God rescues us from that sinking ship. Stay tuned for a brand new edition of United with Christ. United with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation of Life Christian Broadcasting Television. And now, United with Christ. This is the day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. So as we rejoice, we say, good morning. Muy buenos dias, and welcome to a brand new edition of United with Christ, a program that focuses on our Lord, our Savior, our King, the Son of God, God Himself, Jesus Christ, and on His Word that tells us that all who believe in Him, who follow Him, are united with Him. My name is Robert Dominguez, and I have the blessing of being a local pastor here in the great city of El Paso, Texas, but as well, I have the continued blessing of being able to share God's word with every single one of you. God's word that strengthens, encourages, comforts, and edifies us. So if we're going to talk about God's word, well, we need God's help. So as always, we need to pray for God's help as we go ahead and try to understand and apply what his word is telling us. But before we start into prayer, we'd like to remind every single one of you, this station isn't just a station that shares God's word with you, but it's a station that cares about you and wants to pray with you and for you. So right now, there are people waiting here at this station to pray with you. And remember, God's word says that we have not because we ask not. So let's ask and let's ask in faith. So you could call right now. The number is 915-532-8518. And if you call, you'll have some of the loveliest, kindest people there are who are ready and grateful and joyful to pray with you and for you. So that being said, let's go ahead and pray together that God guide us in his message for us today. So Father, we thank you for a new day, a new moment, an opportunity where we cannot just be before you, but that we could receive your word, Father, your word that helps us grow and that encourages during all the times and seasons that we find ourselves in life. Father, we need your understanding and your guidance right now, Father. I ask for every single person watching, listening, that you give us enlightenment, Father, not just so that we understand, but that your word can be a seed that flourishes and bears fruit and that we can apply your word, be transformed by your word so that we could glorify you all of our days. So Father, we give this moment to you. We give this program to you. Lord, I ask that you bless every single person watching right now. We thank you for how good you are. We thank you for your love. We thank you Jesus Christ. It's in your name we pray. And we all said, amen. Now, a little bit over a month ago, I'm sure that you heard some tragic news. About a month ago, there were five men who embarked on a great expedition, an adventure to go and dive in a submarine to see the, the remains of the great ship liner, the Titanic. Well, we know that tragically, those five men who entered this great adventure lost their lives and never came to the surface again. Many of us, I realize, might not ever find ourselves in a submarine. Many of us might never even be on a ship. And I started thinking of how grateful I was that I've never been in that type of risk, a place where I could sink to the bottom of the ocean and how imaginably terrifying that could be. But I also realize that 
we don't necessarily have to enter a physical ship or a physical submarine to feel that we're sinking. There are times in our life where we feel in places of discouragement and of frustration, of sadness, that we sink and that we keep on sinking. And there are times that we find ourselves in those deep and dark waters where we might not find a lot of hope. Many people do struggle with depression and even despair. So what do we do when we find ourselves in those type of moments? Because as believers and non-believers alike, as many good times that we have in life, we do have some sad times, some low times. Well, thankfully, God's word talks about those low times and talks about how we're able not just to confront those sad times, but how we're able to get out of them. There was a man who would probably be able to relate to us when we feel very low, when we feel we're sinking. It's a man by the name of David, King David to be exact. He wrote many of the Psalms that we find in the Bible and the Psalms are very special because we see the heart, the emotions of a man in good times and in bad times. There's one Psalm in particular where we see David expressing feelings as if he were sinking. We find this in Psalm 69, starting in verse 1. You can read along with me if you'd like. David writes, Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in deep mire where there is no foothold. I have come into deep waters, and the flood sweeps over me. I am worn out, calling for help. My throat is parched. My eyes fail, looking for my God. In verse 14, we read him saying, Rescue me from the mire. Do not let me sink. Deliver me from those who hate me from the deep waters. Do not let the flood waters engulf me or the depths swallow me up or the pit close its mouth over me. Did you read that? Did you hear it? Where David wrote, Rescue me from the mire. Do not let me sink, for these flood waters engulf me. And there are times that, that we feel that's exactly what's happening, that our circumstances, that the situation where we find ourselves, maybe we've we found ourselves in some type of sin or, or failure or a difficult trying moment where we feel that sadness and depression is just coming upon us as these engulfing waters and the pressure and the weight is just so heavy that it keeps pushing us further down. These are some metaphorical deep waters that we face, but as well as David faced. But as well, the, the Bible also talks about a, another man who didn't just face metaphorical deep waters. He faced those too, but he actually faced some literal deep waters. There was a man who literally sank in the ocean. Do you know who, who that man is? Well, that's none other than Jonah. We know that Jonah was disobedient to the Lord's orders to go to a city or a town called Nineveh to tell them to repent. Well, there were some consequences for that. So as he tried to run away from God on a boat, well, the story goes that he had to get off that boat. And as he got off that boat and was sinking down um, to the bottom of the ocean, well, we know the story, a fish swallowed him. Well, in this moment, we read what Jonah was feeling. We read in Jonah chapter 2, starting in verse 3, he writes this, speaking to God. You hurled me into the depths, into the very heart of the seas, and the currents whirled about me. All your waves and breakers swept over me. Going on to verse 5, the engulfing waters threatened me. The deep surrounded me. Seaweed was wrapped around my head. Again, he was a man who literally was sinking to the bottom of the ocean. The very heart of the seas was over him. It felt even as if seaweed was around him, choking him. And again, 
Many times in life we feel that we are being choked out by our problems, by our tragic moments. Many times we do feel that we're stuck in mire. But mire isn't a word that we usually say or, or hear a, a whole lot about. If, if we go back to what David wrote in Psalm 69, verse 2, we read that he wrote, I sink in deep mire. So what exactly is mire? Well, I'm glad you asked because I had to look over some definitions of what mire is and check out some of the definitions that I found for us. One definition for mire is a stretch of swampy or boggy ground, a swampy or boggy ground. Another definition is heavy, often deep mud or slush. And I don't know about you, maybe as kids, we all liked playing in mud, but sometimes we've literally been stuck in the mud. I remember a time that we were going to a wedding and we had to do a U-turn on the side of the road, but we didn't see that on that side of the road because it was so dark, it was past twilight time, it was deep mud and our car got stuck and we had to get out and trying to push the car, car out. Well, we couldn't because the mud was up to our knees and it was so hard just to even walk. Have you ever found yourself in some deep mud? Have you ever felt, found yourself in maybe some metaphorical deep mud that as hard as you try to walk forward, you just feel stuck? I know I have. Well, check out another definition of what mire is. Another definition is it's a situation or state of difficulty, distress, or embarrassment from which it is hard to extricate oneself. Interesting. Here we see in that last definition that mire means it's a difficult circumstance which it's hard to remove yourself from, to one that causes you to feel stuck. Well, there was a man by the name of Charles Spurgeon who felt the same way about the Deep Meyer. Charles Spurgeon was a preacher in England during the late 1800s. They even called him the Prince of Preachers because that's how anointed he was. Well, Charles Spurgeon wrote about the different types of deep mire that we might find ourselves in life. He said that one might be the deep mire of unbelief, of not believing in Jesus Christ, so you get stuck in life. Another deep mire is that of inward corruption, the corruption of the heart, the corruption of the mind, the mud that we start filling ourselves with. Another deep mire is the devil's temptation and oppression. And we know that all of us are constantly tempted and many of us are oppressed. And in that temptation, when it comes, it's hard for us to get out of it. We get stuck by this temptation, which is like mud. But the other type of deep mire that Charles Spurgeon described was a deep mire of trial and difficulty. It's what I call the, the four D's in life. I think it's four D's that many of us at one point will be faced with. Those four D's being disease, ourselves, or disease of a loved one, death, the death of a loved one, or even being close to death ourselves, and usually when there is disease and death, could come on depression. And in depression, could come on despair. Sometimes we, we in, in feeling despair and depression and feeling stuck in the mud, we, we might be able to share something that, that we see in other psalms expressing. See if you have ever felt this way. If you go to Psalms 42... Verse 3, we read this. My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me all day long, where is your God? Hmm. Have your tears ever just been so plentiful that they go into your mouth? You could taste the salt. Verse 5 of that Psalms 42, we read, Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed? Within me, we could say that's that's another D that we could have so much depression and do, so much despair that we could feel disturbed physically and emotionally, and of course, well, spiritually. Well, the word despair is interesting because what it literally means is the complete loss or absence of 
hope. If we go back to Psalm 69, verse 2, we read this. I sink in deep mire where there is no foothold, that we, we don't have a standing ground. And when you don't feel that you have a standing ground and you're only going to fall, you lose hope right away. Those of us who have learned to swim, before we really know how to swim well and comfortably, what is the side of the pool that we always usually try to stay on? The shallow end, right, where we feel a foothold. Because even though we're trying to do the doggy paddle and maybe we lose a paddle or two and we start sinking, we could put our foot, our feet on that um, floor. But when we don't have a firm foothold, maybe when we've gone a little bit too far into the deep end, we could really start to panic. We could really start to feel despair, a lack of hope. And really, that is what brings us into depression, especially when we're confronted with death and difficulty and um, trying circumstances. But then the question must be, how do we find hope when we're confronted with disease and death and difficulty? Well, if we go back to verse 5 of Psalm 42, we start seeing the solution. We read, why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. So here David in this psalm is saying, hey, there are times where my soul feels downcast. There are times where I feel so disturbed. Disturbed. There are times where I feel stuck in the mud and it's just dark and these deep waters are around me. And I, even though I look up, it's too dark and I don't know how to get out of here. And many of the times that we, we feel that way, we don't even want to leave our houses. Many times we don't want to even leave our beds. We don't want to be with people. Sometimes we don't even want to pray. But in those very moments, where we feel stuck in the mud, in the deep, and in the dark, the word of God reminds us to put our hope in God. But then we ask, how do we put our hope in God? It's very easy to say that, put your hope in God, but what does that look like? Well, if we go to the New Testament, Paul wrote about this. He wrote this to the Romans. And if we go to Romans chapter 15, in verse 13, we start seeing how we are to put our hope in God when we are stuck in the mud, when we're on a sinking ship. We read this in verse 13 of chapter 15 of Romans. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him. See the connection? If you trust in him, you're going to have joy and peace. You're going to be filled with joy and peace so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So if we want joy, if we want peace in the darkness and in the mud, if we want to be overflowing with hope, two things, it's through the power of the Holy Spirit, and we know that if we believe in Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit comes into us and a fruit of the spirit is joy and peace but as well not only does the holy spirit work in us to give us that joy and peace we also have a responsibility and that is to trust god when you are sinking you must trust him even though it might be dark around you when i was learning how to swim i had to put my trust in my instructor. And sure enough, there was one time where she said, hey, we're gonna go into the deeper end of the pool. And I was very nervous about that. And sure enough, I, though I felt a little comfortable and confident, I started sinking because I panicked because I forgot there wasn't a foothold underneath me. But then I knew that I could reach out. And sure enough, as I reached out, even though I was panicking, I knew if I reached out, she would grab me. And sure enough, she got me out of the water. She took care of me. That is putting our trust in someone is when we are sinking is crying out, stretching out, saying, God, help me. I trust you that you will help me. But to be able to trust God, we need to know what we could trust God in. The promises 
that God gives us, especially the promises that we need to focus on, to claim to when we feel we are sinking or stuck in the mud. Staying in the book of Romans, if we go back some chapters in chapter 8, we read a promise that we have in God. If you go to Romans chapter 8, we read this in verses 23 and 25. We read, not only so, but we ourselves, believers in Christ, who have the first fruit of the Spirit, we grow inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. What we're seeing here is that a promise that we have in God is that though our bodies might be faced with disease and decay, destruction, even death, what we have right now and all of us are slowly decaying day by day and all of us are groaning inwardly for a day where we will be fully strengthened and energized and made new, what we call the redemption of our bodies, a new body that we're going to receive. And not only a new body, but new circumstances, perfect circumstances, a perfect life in the presence of God. That is what we put our hope in. We don't yet have it because we're not living that right now. But when things get so bad, even if death is knocking at our door, even if death is knocking on the door of our, of our loved ones, we know that in God, if they believe in God, there is redemption, there is hope, there is life. My mom, who had lupus for 20 plus years, someone, a woman of faith that I saw decay year and year and year passing would always tell me, hey, though I might not be with you in this life, one day I will be with Jesus Christ for eternity and you will see me again. That is putting our hope in God. If we stay in Romans chapter eight, a few verses later in verse 28, we read this. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. That means no matter what situation you find yourself in, then we have another promise. Not just that there's gonna be the redemption of bodies one day in the future, a perfect and new life in the future. Even now, everything, God, a perfect God, is working everything out for the good of those who love him. That means that even if we find ourselves in the mud, even if we find ourselves sinking or in the dark, God is, going, is working. And many times when we find ourselves in the mud, it's just an opportunity to put our hope again in God, to pray to God. I once heard a pastor say that many times pain is God's megaphone. Many times God is trying to reach out to us in those hard places so that we may cry out to him and reach out to him. So when you find yourself in that mud, put your hope in God by trusting in God that he's going to take you out, that he is working it out, that there is a perfect plan, that there is hope. But there's one last thing that I'd like to tell all of you. We don't just sit around and wait and not do anything. Yes, we put our hope in God, our trust in God, and our trust in the promises of God when we're stuck in the mud. But if we go to Romans chapter 12, verse 12, we read what we are all to do when we feel we're sinking. Be joyful in hope by trusting in God. Be patient in affliction in a difficult time where you wait it out, waiting on God, and be faithful in prayer. This is what David wrote going back to Psalm 69. But I pray to you, Lord, in the time of your favor, in your great love, O God, answer me with sure salvation. Rescue me from the mire. Do not let me sink. Deliver me from those who hate me, from the deep waters. Do not let the flood waters engulf me or the depths swallow me up or the pit close its mouth over me. He knew to pray. That's exactly what Jonah did. We read in Jonah chapter 2, 
Verse 2, in my distress, I called to the Lord and he answered me. From the deep in the realm of the dead, I called for help and you listened to my cry. To the roots of the mountains, I sank down the earth beneath me and forever. But you, Lord my God, brought my life up from the pit. So that is what we are to do when we feel that we are sinking, when we are in a pit, when we feel barred. We know to pray to God and put our trust in God. And that's our takeaway for today. When sinking, put your hope in God by trusting in God through prayer, praise, and proclamation of God's promises. Because that's exactly what David did. The last verse I'll share with you, again, Psalm 69 29 through 30, David write, but as for me, afflicted and in pain, may your salvation, God, protect me. I will praise God's name in song and glorify him with thanksgiving. So let's give thanks to God. Father, we thank you so much that you are with us in every storm, that you are with us even in the mud, that we know that we could cry out to you when we feel that we are sinking. Father, thank you for your promise that says that we will always have eternal life in you and that no matter what circumstance we find ourselves in, you are working it all out for our good. So Lord, I ask that you encourage all those who are watching, those who feel that they are sinking, may they put their trust in you, but may the first step always be by believing in and following your son, Jesus Christ. We pray this in his name and we all said, Amen. God loves you and may God always bless you. We'll see you next time.